All right, welcome to this video. In the last video, I talked about basic reaction rate equations and how to derive the missing variables. Uh, so you may have seen in the video, we looked at some empirical data, and I was just able to solve for k, m, and n of an equation. But in this video, I'm gonna actually derive some equations for you. I'm gonna get reaction rate functions. When I say function, I'm gonna say as a function of time, and I'm gonna show you the graphs, what they look like. So if you remember our reaction rate equation is k a to the m <clears throat> times b to the n. And there's basically three different orders we're gonna take a look at here. We have the zeroth order, I have the first order, and I have the second order. And I'm just gonna be dealing with one, uh, one compound right now that is uh, you know, the rate of, of, of disappearance of one. So when we talk about these rates, really what we're talking about is a rate of disappearance. So really there's a negative here because they're, they're disappearing. And when I say the word rate, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to start here talking about the, the zeroth order here. I'm going to talk about all of these orders and what you can expect to see when you see graphs. This is the zeroth order here. And when we talk about a rate, I'm talking about uh, the rate of disappearance of something. And that's going to basically give me negative k a, and I'm just going to take that to the zero, okay? To the zero. So the rate of anything is going to be the change of something with time. So the change of a with respect to t, how fast is that changing over time? And this is going to be negative k, and anything to the zero is one. So if I was looking for an average rate, this would this would basically give me an average here, okay? This would give me an average over some period of time. And, you know, if I had like every four seconds, if I was getting something, that would give me a pretty good estimation there. But let's say that I want to do something more than that. Let's say that I want to find an instant, at any instant of time, let's say that I don't want to know it over four second intervals or two second intervals. I just want to know at any second, like if I want to know at 1.2 seconds, what is the concentration of A? at 1.7 seconds, 1.71, then we have to actually derive uh, an instantaneous equation, okay? Instantaneous, okay? And to do that, I need to apply a very basic differential equation. I need to say that the rate at which A is changing with time is equal to negative K. What is that saying? It's saying that the rate at which A is changing is just constant, and it's, a, it's disappearing, so it's a negative constant. So to solve a very basic differential equation, I basically have to separate my variables. And again, this is the, probably one of the most basic ordinary differential equations you could have. I'm just going to separate these. And the reason I have to separate them is because before I integrate, I have to separate my variables. And I have to define my endpoints here. So I'm going to integrate this side. I'm going to integrate this side. Okay. And if we're taking an indefinite interval, we're going to end up with some constant, right? But this this guy, we're actually going to, we know what we're going to take it from. We're going to take it from some initial concentration to some final concentration. And this one, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start from zero. Let's assume that we're starting from a time of zero, because I'm going to simplify this equation just a little bit. Anytime we know we can start from zero. Let's always start our integral from there. And time is a very convenient one to start from zero. And I'm going to go to the final time here. So when I go ahead and evaluate that, I'm going to get <clears throat> something very interesting. I'm going to get A evaluated from A, you know, A initial down here to A final. And I'm going to get negative K. And then T is going to be evaluated from zero to T like this. So when I plug that in, I'm going to have A minus a initial equals negative kt and again if I plugged in the zero it would just be minus zero. So a is going to equal negative kt plus a initial and that's going to be my governing equation there. I'm going to have a as a function of time so a really is telling me at any given point in time what is the concentration of A right here? Okay, so that's my like my governing equation. That's really important stuff right there because I need to know how to find a concentration of A at, at any particular point.
point in time for that given concentration. So when I'm evaluating a graph, let's just identify some of the parameters here, the basic parameters governing this equation. The first one here is going to be my um, my dependent variable here. And my independent variable here is going to be time. I'm just going to abbreviate that independent. And that's just like this guy right here. This is just a constant, right? So what is this graph going to look like? Let me, let's plot our dependent variable versus our independent variable here on this graph. I'm going to go back to the green here just to kind of emphasize this. So here's my dependent variable A as a function of t, my d, uh, independent variable, okay? So I'm going to start with some constant up here, whatever that is, here's my a initial, here's my initial value right there, okay? That's my constant. But now this is a line, this is a linear function, right? Clearly we can see that, that that's just negative kt, and that's just going to be some uh, sloping function that's going to drop, okay, as some function of time, whatever that is, okay, whatever that is. So at some point, uh, we're going to start, we're gonna, again, we're going to start with this concentration of A uh, here, and at which is AO, right? That's, that's our intercept right there. In other words, when time equals zero, right, that's our intercept. And at some point, it's just going to steadily drop off until there is no more uh, of our, of our uh, basic uh, amount here of A. It's all going to be used up, and it's going to drop down. So when we're talking about a versus t, okay, um, th this is important because the zeroth function is going to be a line. This is a linear function. Now, why do we care about that? Well, each of these particular um, basic rates here that we go with, in other words, we're talking about the, the zeroth order, the first order, the second order, they're all going to have their own unique graphs that they present themselves as a linear function. And one of the clues that you're going to have to deal with when you see these graphs is you're going to have to identify from a graph uh, basically what type of a, a order is this. Is this is a zero order, a first order, or a second order? And so in this particular graph, if you see a linear function decreasing from some initial amount on the a versus t graph, you know right away that this is a zeroth order um, a re reaction rate equation. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to find the first and then the second order equations uh, of your reaction rate equations. We're going to go ahead and derive those, and we're also going to show, I'm going to show you the graphs that present themselves as a linear function. And we're going to have to transform those graphs, which I'll get into in, in the next videos. All right, I'll talk to you soon.